So good evening and welcome to the Lamsan CPD session. Uh, Lamsan is an organization of young people who share the same passion for assisting their fellow students and professionals from different parts of the world. Students of different grades are offered assistance to pursue their dreams in life. Various students due to incompetent facilities or opportunities in their own native area find the necessity for moving to other cities to pursue their students' uh, studies or careers. Pursuing students for hunting jobs in other cities open a whole new can of worms. In, other, in their crusade, students often trapped into dilemmas such as which college to study, which course to opt for, which will engineering do the best for them, or shall they opt for a commerce uh, courses, and the list goes for eternity. And in all these years, many students end up studying in wrong colleges and on schools or leaving the ideas altogether and returning back, uh, back to their native home, uh, respective homes. At the Lamsan, we connect students from remote areas to mentors and professionals at global level. So for today's session, uh, we would like to welcome our two guests. So firstly, we have uh, Ms. Tanzanitka. She is from Kitsa Village. She has done her schooling firstly from S.T. Peter School uh, till 8th grade and from London Model Senior Secondary School till 10th. After that, she went to uh, Mahendra United World College in Pune for 11th and 12th. She has done her bachelor in United States. Currently, she is working in Puro Institute as this research technician, uh, which deals with immunology and infectious diseases. And uh, next we have uh, Mr. Sunam Gurmit. Uh, he is from both Kharbu village. Uh, he has done his schooling till the grade at Lam uh, till tenth grade at London Model Senior Secondary School and eleventh and twelfth at Mahendra United World College, Pune. Uh, she got undergraduate at Wartburg College, USA. Uh, currently, he is in fourth year studying. Actuarial science and mathematics as major, and computer science and data as minor. And uh, both of them are uh, to share their experience and more about their international opportunities. Hope you all will take advantage of this session. And you can share your screen and start with the presentation. Thank you. Great, uh, great. Thank you, Jingme Dangwale, for that amazing introduction. And thank you so much, Lamstan, for um, having to take the time to make this together, even in this global pandemic, which is really appreciable. Um, so um, without further ado, I think we can start the presentation, which is right over here. Okay, um, so yeah, so me and um, your myth, we made sure that we put a presentation together for this uh, career conference, and I hope you guys make the most out of it. And please feel free to ask any questions that you have along the way. Uh, you can, you know, put the thumbs up button at your screen, screen, or, you know, you can just like intervene while we are giving a conversation because we want it to be like multi, like bi-directional, not just us saying things. Also, if you have any other questions, we have the information, our uh, question sessions at the very end. So please um, make sure you have them already. Um, so yeah, international opportunities. Um, so first we would like to give you an overview of what UWC is and how uh, that is important for getting us to an in, get, give, uh, having the opportunity for us to study internationally, which is an important aspect because um, um, th this was the first, um, the uh, United World College that made it possible for us. Otherwise we wouldn't even thought, uh, uh, we wouldn't even uh, like, see ourselves studying abroad. So what is UWC? Um, United World College is a global education movement to make education a peace to unite people, nation, culture for peace and sustainable future. So there are different colleges all around the world based on United World College and there are 18 different colleges and the shared ID of this different colleges it's basically on uh, making peace as uh, 
okay this is a different one okay making uh, making making peace as the motto and then having to connect the na uh, nations and culture for the peace and sustainable future and they they focus mostly on shared humanity and social changes and how to um, make it possible to take actions and take leadership roles uh, locally nationally and internationally so it's going to give you an international outlook that's there. And what are the UWC core values? So UWC schools and colleges all over the world deliver a challenging and transformational education um, experiences to, to a deliberately diverse group of young people. And the core values of this um, co colleges together are international and intercultural understanding, uh, celebration of differences, personal responsibility and integrity, mutual responsibility and respect, compassion and service, uh, respect for the environment, a sense of idealism. So all of these core values, they are something that you need to see a change in the world. And that's the core driven, um, the mission of the UWC. As you can see in the picture, they have the UWC learning experiences, academic, social, they give equal importance to all these different facets of who you are as a person, not just focusing on uh, on grades or GPA. So moving on to the next slide, um, I will hand it over to Sonam. Yeah, so mo moving on. So there are 18 colleges and uh, schools in the entire world, uh, UWC colleges. And on the map, you can see the different colleges and in different areas. And there are like 18, one in Canada, USA, Costa Rica, Germany, Wales, Italy, and every like India, China, and everywhere US call, UWC colleges are uh, like everywhere in different parts of the world. And in UWC uh, colleges, most of the students are under like 16 to 19 years old. And this is a very critical age. And it says like, it's a time when young people's energy, energy and idealism can be guided toward empathy, responsibility, and lifelong action. And moving on to the academic session. Yeah, so as UWC, as Itga already said that UWC makes education a uh, force. So uh, focusing on the academic sessions, uh, in UWC, you have the IB diploma. It's called International Baccalaureate, unlike like we have uh, CBSE in the Indian system, but it is not like CBSE in the Indian system. We have a predetermined fields like which we were forced to go, like whether you have to choose like arts or non-med or med. But in UWC, you can customize. In IB, you can customize your subjects. Like you have six main subjects. Like you have to take like two languages and one from uh, social science, like you can take history, geography, or pole science, or anything you like. And you can take one science, like bio, chemistry, physics, whatever you like, you can take that. And and one thing is like maths is compulsory, but you have uh, different levels of maths. If you think you are good at maths, you can take like advanced level of maths. If you think you are not a maths person, you can take a very basic level of maths. And, and the last part is arts, like where you can get like filming, like dance, wherever, whatever. If you're like artistic, you can choose a good art class. And uh, apart from the six main subjects, there are three other small programs. Like uh, number one is like extended essay, which is like at the end of the two year, it's a high school, like 11 and 10, 11 and 12. So at the end of the two years, you have to uh, give a like you have to take in like research in-depth research essay so i did my extended essay ee on uh, i stupa i used my like mathematics and science physics skills like to find an optimal shape of the i stupa that uh, were newly <coughs> built by sonam wangchuk like i did like uh, optimization like what's the best uh, uh, radius and best height for an i stupa to get like most volume and and have the smallest surface area so it can last long and uh, the second part is theory of knowledge it's like a basically a philosophy class like where you question everything whatever like it's like a uh, discussion class and the third part is cast we call it cast creativity activity and service so moving on to cast so 
this is the co-curricular activities is my favorite part like back home in indian system we are always forced to study 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 we are never encouraged to like whatever like follow our introspection or like we were never encouraged to play to like art to sing so in uwc your every values <laughs> your value your interest is appreciated so in the co-curricular activities in creativity you have like singing whatever creativity if you're artistic i was not an artistic but like i have seen like some of my friends some of my friends from different countries they're like amazing they're artistic like they have very artistic <laughs> skills like thinking creative thinking so you can take any of the art classes like singing dancing you can paint you can film and anything and the next part is activity okay this is my favorite part i have to say like uh, back home i used to like play everything and when i'm in uwc i played i think every activity like physical activities like sports they have like and it's not just like playing games you say like back home we take it like very lightly oh like yang spal se rupa mal se yang spal se karu lebano we said that but like uh, from like physical activities uh, you can learn a lot like whatever you learn in class like team building <laughs> leadership you you have the practical uh, area where you can uh, use all your skills in physical like i used to play i said that i used to play all kind of sport like i used to play like volleyball and you can also organize if you're good at something i was good at like handball and football so i was organizing the sports i was teaching people who don't want and wants to uh, see like wants to uh, play like football wants to start football so we were uh, helping them we were like team building we were like uh, <laughs> applying like leadership qualities like leadership skills and it was a very good opportunity to uh, express yourself like whatever uh, leadership qualities or whatever talent you have and moving on the next part is service so uwc it's not just an academic like a regular <laughs> rigorous academic uh, course it's also have like time to service like uh, you can volunteer to ngos you can and in in uwc like every semester we used to have a, like a two week so in india like we me and sanjin was both in india so we have like uh, two india like uh, india two so like a week of service so you go to like different parts of uh, the country like uh, and you work with different organization that was an amazing <clears throat> opportunity to learn like to see more and to serve to the society and to give something back and uh, not just uh, one week of service but on campus on like uh, every like two days in a week you can <clears throat> do like uh, there's also oh. interviews on campus so you can work with them yeah so i think it it can add on more on that one yes definitely so there are a range of opportunities in terms of service as well like what type of service you want to do right like do you want to uh, be a teacher at a high school or do you want to work as an activist in a environmental uh, like an um, advocate for environmental um, goals right so you will have that option as well and depending upon that like you can choose from that and that's the beauty of it and they they, they focus on any like the service as as important as you would do your uh, education they will grade you not really grade you but they will keep track of it and you have to fulfill those criteria to graduate as in um, with a diploma after the two years so um i what i did was basically i was uh, going to a high school which is so uwc itself um, i um, me and sona we both went to pune so it was really far away from pune it was like 2 hours away from pune and the area we lived in was on a biodiversity reserve and around that there were a lot of villages and those village kids were not given or they didn't had a good opportunity to study they the board was uh, marathi and they didn't really it's a government school so they, they didn't really had the infrastructure for science based uh, classes so what we used to do is like we have a small education uh, stream team and we used to go down every week and then they we used to demonstrate them experiments like small science based experiments and we used to like teach them and what what was important was the kids also got like a different outlook on things in terms of like um they uh, like international students coming over and then conversating with them and talking with them built new bridges and new bonds that they will cherish for lifetime so that's there 
All right, moving on to application process. Yep. So I can assure you, UWC will change your life. It's a life changing experience. And I'll encourage everyone, like, spread the word when uh, we'll also said we'll also let you the dates and stuff so when you can apply so i think like everyone should like who's studying currently studying in 10 years should apply for uwc and when those people who are like still sitting in like eight nine in schools they should mm -hmm. think about uwc and, and so the application process is uh, multi-dimensional it's not just a focus on your academic think like academic matters but it doesn't matters a lot it's a holistic approach it's depends on who you are as a person and if your values if your ethics if your values match with the uwc values you'll definitely get in and i'll assure you your life will change and uh, there's like three parts ways one national committee so in every country as Idga said earlier that every country has a national committee so uh, in the beginning Idga will later explain brief, uh, more in more details how the application process goes but like there's a, a national committee where you can apply for and there's a UWC global section and if you study in London both me and Idga go through London connections London school and has a very good connection with UWC Singapore. So this uh, give us full scholarship to study and we are very grateful for that for both London and UWC Singapore. So moving on. Right. Yeah, so moving on to like, what is the first one? National committees, right? So national committees are basically like a group of people who represent one country and there are 150 countries all over the world. So there will be 150 national committees all over the world. So what you will do basically when you fill out an application um, and um, the application will go to the national committee and then they will decide which colleges that you fit into because they're not going to just keep you in India. They're going to send you to like 18 different countries, right? Uh, because uh, now, like, especially in the given like two years before, there's more adding on to UWC colleges all over the world. Like there was only when I, when I went, there was only like 11 or 12 colleges. Right now it's 18. So it's expanding on a massive rate. Like that's what they think that the world needs right now, like more energetic or like as aspirant students who want to change the world or do something uh, more than what they can, you know, what the local, uh, I don't know, like the, the view is to expand more and they want to like make sure that the ideal of UWC is um, preserved. So um, I will give you an, um, yeah, so I think, yes, the UWC funding and scholarship, what is basically, um, how it's, how, what are the mechanisms that you can fund, right? For national committee, uh, when you are applying to a national committee, you will, so they will look at how much of what percent you can pay. If you can pay, like you are belonging from a family that you can pay, or then they will, you have to pay a certain percentage and the certain percentage will be covered by the national committee. And despite, even if you do not have a strong, um, uh, strong financial background, they will make sure that you, they understand it. They understand the process of it and they will make sure that you are, you are well, you know, you don't feel that difference when you go to UWC because it, Thing, the values are basically equal equality and everything so so the the funding is primarily based on merit based scholarship you need to have a strong um, it's advisable to have a strong academic background because IB baccalaureate itself it grinds you it like it was really tough for like I think for me as well and any Ladakhi or like whosoever has gone to like um, uh, from uh, Ladakh to UWC, it's been really tough for us to adjust because we were never gotten a uh, chance to go to an international school. That was one thing. So the first round of application through the national community is like fill out the uh, form. Uh, what you can do is you can send out a money order to the college and then they will send you the form back and then you can fill that out and then you can send them back. Um, and after that, they will review it. And the second round of uh, application process is the interview process. They will, if you are not able to get the interview via um, coming to the college, you can have the facility of like Skype or phone call. Now, internet has better in the dark, so uh, it shouldn't be a problem. 
Um, and then the other mechanisms are UWC Global Selection Program. That means um, that program is specifically for people who can forego financial assistance, meaning they do not require financial assistance. And the third uh, alternative way is through Lambda Connections. They, um, so Lambda School has connections with the United World called Southeast Asia, which is situated in Singapore. And the, the Singapore staff, like the teachers at the Singapore school, what they do is they, they take some percent of their income. It's not that their school is funding. It's not that they're rich. What they're doing is like they're, they're pulling together, they're pulling together money dedicated for the student to go to UWC in Pune. And this connection has been really viable uh, and really uh, important for students because it's, it's giving an opportunity for especially Ladakh students who would not get the opportunity otherwise to go. Because we as Ladakhi, I don't think we will be able to compete because our education hasn't been that, you know, like compete with the um, Indian system of, you know, they're very like, very hard like just because our education system hasn't been that hard that doesn't mean that we're not getting the opportunity and this is making it possible we all should have that um, resilience and motivation to like apply to do something different not just mainstream what we're taught to um, that's there and what the timeline that of that looks like is like after your 10th of 10th grade um, board, board, uh, board examination in early March uh, they come for interview and after interview session and then um, they will decide, they will give you the, um, whether you accept it or not to that route. And then um, the school will start in early August. So it's also different when they tend to start the school. So different colleges have different um, starting dates. So what makes UWC different, right? Because I think there's a lot of myth and dilemma of, oh, what I'm going to do after 12th grade. Oh, I'm not, I'm totally going away from the Indian system. Oh, there's nothing for me because it will be hard for me to come back. So these were the questions also I faced along the way. Like, okay, I'm, I'm doing something different. I'm not taking medical, non-medical commerce arts. So what, I, what will my future will entail? Like, it was really hard for you to like make sense when you were in the process, but trusting the process and trusting um, you know, like whatever you're doing, doing your best 100%. And at the end, of course, the outcome will be great as long as you show your dedication and hard work. So, so it's an international experience. You are getting the experience of uh, talking with people from all 150 different countries. And you are, you are, you're talking with them about your life experiences, your room, room, roommate rooming with them, and your friends are there, and you're studying abroad, right? So all these experiences change you as a person. It creates, oh yeah, your option of creating your course combination. You're just not restricted to take one thing. You can intertwine and, you know, get the creative outlet and bring different things together so and also if you do really good in this two years of uwc uwc itself has connections in different colleges all over the united states and if you have studied as a uwc scholar they will give you like special um davis scholarship as well as more they will they are more willing to accept you because they know that uwc itself has been trained you really well so that you can get into um the U.S. College, uh, colleges. So you can also go to like Yale, Harvard, Stanford. Those colleges, you know, like they would, they would take you in. So it's an opportunity for you to grow from Ladakh and get out in the global world. Um, so creativity, action, and service, as Sonam has mentioned, they're equally important as great. So you, you get that chance to like try different things at this very young age. Skills and experiences acquired studying at UWC and abroad will help you become a better student with an international outlook. Um, you, will, you will understand the relationships between different countries. So if you're studying just in India, what would be the drawback would be like you are, you are trained as one mindset. You are, you are only allowed to have one perspective. So studying with like different cultural international students, you will have different perspective, understanding their conversations and giving your contribution in, in discussions and you grow as a, uh, as a person, right? And yeah, the food was great at where I studied. So I just thought I'll add it. It was a fun, uh, fun fact. You will, you, will, you will get to try different foods from different countries because they are like always there. Can you hear me? 
give a scholarship to study abroad as well. So from there, you will be given a, given a certain percentage to go abroad and study um, in any of the colleges. So I would like to uh, share my um, experience of what was after UWC, like, okay, how do you make sense? How do you go through the applications process to go to, um, you go to the US? So this is the, I, I just copy pasted the website, um, how to apply to the St. Lawrence University, which I graduated from and how that looks like. I'll break that, break, break that down for you, how the timeline and the checklist looks like. So if you're applying to St. Lawrence University, then St. Lawrence University accepts the common application um, only. So I will explain that to you in the next uh, slide. So you will have three different types of application, pre-application, common application, fee waiver process. Uh, if you're not, so when you're applying to a common application, you have to pay when you're filling a form, uh, right? You have to pay for a certain application. So they also have the option for fee waiver. You don't have to pay, like depending upon your financial um, background. So application informations, there are different types of application um, um, you can easily go and find it at the website. Uh, early decision is one of them. Regular decision is one of them. International students. Um, so I clicked on the international student information and then they had this two different um, uh, information or the checklist. So what exactly is um, in common application? Common application is an online system that you can apply to different colleges in the US. All the, most of the colleges in the US will have the system. Um, you will fill out the application, one application, and that application can go to different colleges. So you don't have to apply to one, two, three, four, how many you're applying. So you can make one colleges, one application that can go to different colleges. So that's important. That's what they're requiring it to be. And official transcript, your 10th grade um, um, uh, scores, and then your SAT and ACT. So you will have to appear for an exam, which is a standardized test. Um, which is basically um, like a, like evaluation of um, English, math, verbal reading skills that you have acquired until your 12th grade. So it's, it's a practice that you have to do. Like you will, you have to practice for it. Otherwise you won't be able to score good because um, it's just the design of the exam system is different from how we would do it. They have timings and you have, you know, uh, regulations according to it. So you have to make sure that you score a good marks because they look at it when you are applying to US colleges. And TOEFL is for another non-native uh, non English speakers. So if your mother tongue is not English, then you have to appear for TOEFL, which, um, which is which looks at your reading, again, verbal uh, English aspect of conversing, how proficient you are in talking, because if you're coming to US, you have to make sure your communication skills are good because you're, everything is in English, otherwise it will be challenging for you. So they're trying to make sure of that. Um, oh, sorry, um, right, so that's there. And uh, financial aid form. So once you fill that out, the colleges will view your financial aid and then um, they make sure that, you know, they, they give you a package of scholarship. So filling that out will give you a chance to like uh, demonstrate how much you can pay and they understand it. And you can, you know, some students also, if you're a good merit, merit uh, you have it, then you, you, you're going you're gonna to go on a full ride. So you don't have to pay anything. So that's there as an option as well. So I think four minutes are remaining. Um, how about if we move on to Sonam Girmit and his experiences at Wordbug? Okay. okay, so after filling, going through all the processes that Idga just mentioned, so I got into one of the US colleges, it's a, like Wordbug College. So I started my journey in Wordbug College in 2017, like September 2017. And one thing that I can say it's in studying in the United States, it's an amazing feeling. It's you have a whole lots of opportunities. You have opportunities on every steps you take in every directions, like, but you have to choose wisely what's directions uh, good for you. And in Wordbook College, like in every other colleges, you have like different clubs and organization that you can be a part of and that can hone your skills as a leadership, as a leader, and as a good student, or like as a student, like well-equipped student. So uh, uh, my 
interest, main interest of academic was I used to love maths, but I don't know what to do. Like I, I wanted to be like, at some point I wanted to be a teacher like I can teach like maths because I love maths because I like good teachers at uh, maths teacher in London I have like good basics in London so I wanted to do something with maths so but I didn't know what should I do then uh, after coming to Wardwood College uh, they have this uh, program say, actuarial science it's a major so actuarial science it's a highly maths and base uh, uh, career it's a new professions like uh, even in the u.s it's a very new profession so i'll go more into depth in actuarial science later and uh, as an actuarial science i have to be like good with numbers and i was good at math so i take actuarial science and mathematics as my majors and actuarial science is a combination of maths accounting finance <coughs> and computer science so i also take uh, data analytics and computer science as my minor and in this uh, so far i've spent like three years in my college so i'm going to be like in my last year of college and so far i have been a part of the international club i serve as a, a treasurer uh, on the exact team for 2018 and 19 that was an amazing experience to see like how an actuary <clears throat> does his work like it comes like uh, as a treasurer i was responsible for the financial thing so it gives me the opportunity to whatever i'm do, whatever i'm going to do in my future so it gives me in that opportunity and later that i had another chance to be a treasurer for the asian student association then as uh, soccer football was always in part of me so i also played for like two seasons 2017 and 19 in the school team and and at the last like last four year it was more hectic so i have to uh, move my focus more to my academic side so i quit the soccer team but we still play every week i got it all right so i'll resume mm, can you go to the previous slide oh yeah yeah so continue on my actual journey so oh i'll move on the next slide. okay so continue on my actual journey so i think a lot of people heard it like for the first time like what's actual science you might have lots of questions what's actual science and everything so it was also a new very new thing for me and every time when i talk to someone like okay what are you studying i studied actual science i'm like what what is that so like i'll explain briefly so actuarial science it's a very new profession it's a, <clears throat> a new profession and it usually deals with evaluating risk and maintaining the economic stability of insurance and finance in uh, organizations it's used like mathematics and statistics and probability uh, to predict the uncertainty in different um, in the financials <clears throat> in the financial system so actuaries use like past data they use past data and determine and observe and analyze past data and, uh, and they make models to come up with uh, like financial loss for example uh, mostly actuaries work in the insurance for example they look and for example like if they say like how many let's take an example of a car accident so like car insurance so they'll say like how many car accidents happen in ladakh like or in lay in the past year so based on that data that's uh, statistics they and they'll and they'll make a model and they'll say like okay how much you have to pay and what age range you are and how much you have to pay for your insurance so and uh, actuarial also works in like financial banking system and mostly but mostly actuarial works in the insurance system and in india actuarial science is also a new thing but uh, it's a budding profession but it has been like growing since it started so i'll uh, explain briefly later and uh, what why i choose actuarial science it was because of because for my because of the love that i have for mathematics and i really wanted to do something with mathematics so it gives me the opportunity to uh, use my mathematics skills and knowledge yeah that's why i choose to be an actuary so hopefully one day i'll be an actuary so how to become an actuary so actually it's a rigorous field like it's a 
but you will uh, pay it well you'll pay it uh, for your hard work so uh, actually as a degree there there are like colleges in us they're like very limited colleges and and f for fortunately wordberg is one of the colleges that gives actual degree <laughs> degrees in actual science so i was fortunate to be here in wordberg but uh, to be an actuary a degree is recommended but it's not necessary and actual science what is actual science is a series of exams so you have to pass like 10 to 11 exams to be an actuary but the and on an average, it takes like seven to 10 years to pass the exam, but you don't have to wait seven to 10 years to be an actuary. Like uh, the good news is that you can work as an entry level actuary assistant after like completing your first two exams. I'm preparing right now, I'm like taking this advantage of staying home and, and it's my summer break. So I'm taking this advantage, this free time to study for my actual exam. I'm giving one in September. So before like uh, uh, my college ends, I want to give like two, um, the first two exams. So uh, it's an entry level exam. So after you done with the two entry level exam, you can work as an actuary assistant. And, and the thing is, the good thing is companies, whatever companies you are working, they give you also they also give you like apart from work they also give you like study periods so you can you can work and you can also get study period and those study periods are paid and they also paid for your uh, exams and uh, in the beginning the exams are pretty um, big expensive but uh, you will get <coughs> well rewarded and in and actually there are like different actuarial institutes like institute in india it says the institute of actuarial of india and us <laughs> so like to be an actuary you have to be a part of this institute so after giving one of completing one of the exam like first exam you will automatically be a part of the uh, institute and in usa it's the society of actuaries and moving on all right any yeah. last words you would like to say about actual yeah, science? Yeah, so actually, I think uh, actual science is for those like who love maths, but like you don't want to be in non-math because in India you all only have like these options. Like if you want maths, but even though I don't used to like chemistry, but I have to take like if I was in if I was supposed to be in Indian system, I have to take like non-math or I can take uh, math with another thing. But yeah, and actual science is a uh combine combinations of like maths uh, finance accounting and it's like ca like uh, commerce in india but like it's a bit different but like it's a very good job like very rewarding job like if you love maths i'll assure you like you should uh, you should follow this dream of being actually like and i can assist you uh, whenever you want and you don't need any degrees and the good thing is like you don't need to go to like universities you don't need to be like phd or like masters you can just get uh, a job after right after your college and you can just like work and give the exams and also get paid so that's the most amazing thing about actuarial science yeah so uh, and at some point i also feel like okay i have been studying for really long i need to be in the work feel now i think that's a really <clears throat> amazing thing about actuarial science right getting that experience right after yeah. graduation that's great um yes so uh, i would like to share uh, my experience about at st lawrence university so um i just recently graduated so that means i stayed in the us in canton new york for four years i did my bachelor's of science i majored in neuroscience and public health so um, I never knew that I would do something related to neuroscience. I was like, okay, I, I had a passion in science, but never really know what I was really attracted in science. Okay, biology was the only thing with the different, like, you know, your different careers that you can take, not just being, an, uh, being a doctor, right? That's what we have been told. So um, after coming to St. Lawrence University, I, after my second year, I got the opportunity to work at the neurology camp, which is, uh, which was at LIP, Ladakh Institute of Prevention. So they had this annual uh, uh, neurology camp uh, where the doctors from uh, Cleveland, Ohio, 
they come to Ladakh and they were doing neurology examinations and I was able to help them uh, as a student just translating and um, uh, understanding what are the issues and what are the main uh, problems that Ladakhi people are going through because I, I wanted to do something related with neuroscience. Um, and um, consequently, I am really inspired to do something in terms of you want to expand the profession related to neuroscience because it was really hard to see that no, there was no neuroscientist or neuro or neurologist in Ladakh. So that's uh, where I got interested in neuroscience. And um, and then after that, the the following fall semester after that summer, I got the opportunity to work um, in uh, in, a, in various laboratory settings at. Lawrence University. I worked with uh, my professor, Dr. Anna Estevas, and she was a neuropharmacology um, teacher, my, my advisor as well, and she mainly looked at C. elegans. So I, I attached a picture over here, so you guys might be like, oh, what is it? Like, what is it, right? So this basically um, uh, sums up what I've been doing like um, in, as a neuroscience major. You take a worm, you use it as a model organism, and what we looked at is was um, like e-liquid, like cigarettes, right, um, or vape, vape we say, what are the effects of those nicotine and different flavors on these organisms? Why are we looking at this like C. elegans as a model? Because they have different receptors that is really important to understand the broader picture, like the mechanisms of how these things work. So that was really like eye-opening for me and um, something that put my step into like research opportunities and starting to take a research career path in sciences. Um, so that's where it all began. And, um, and after that, the, during the following summer, which was last year, I got the opportunity to work with three different other students. And what we did was, um, so this research project that we worked on was um, filter paper. You're using a filter paper you put it in your mouth, you take the saliva out and how you would like to, how would you measure the cortisol level in it? So why that's important? Because you can study high altitude physiology, stress in uh, different places, right? For example, there were researchers from our college that used to go to Himalaya, like Nepal, Mount Everest tracking and all of those things. So how, how the human physiology changes uh, when adapting to stress or like environmental stress. So the entire process was really great because what they did, these two students, um, David and Brandon, they went to Nepal the, the summer. I, didn't, I couldn't go, but then they went, they brought back the samples. And in the lab, we analyzed those and tried to figure out the concentration of cortisol. And we tried to make this uh, protocol that is easy because you you would need other equipments like refrigeration and electricity, which are not really available in far-flung areas of Nepal. Or, like it's like it's remote areas are hard. So trying to develop this mechanism was something that I would like to do, and I, I helped them out, and it was like a really rewarding experience. So that's how I got into, and I will. I, I'm just telling you guys about these research experiences because that gives you like a different outlook on what you can do apart from, uh, like the Indian being a doctor, or like other other career paths that you can also follow. Um, and um, so that was my senior year. Uh, I worked with uh, mice and I, what, I, what I was doing basically is like taking the brain of the mice and uh, putting them uh, into different solutions of nanomaterials and trying to understand the protective effects. So Adrivon is a medi medication and you're trying to compare with the nanoparticle and trying to see the uh, positive results of those things. So I won't really go into the, those details, but that was something that I worked with. And then the second project that I worked on, that's my professor over here. We work in like, um, so like not a teacher student setup, but like more like a colleague setup. Um, and I got to learn and have a lot of experience from him. So that's something I'm really grateful for. And I don't think I would be able to do that if I would have continued my education in India. And I'm really grateful for this experience. So I would, um, I'm just telling you about these things because 
there are a lot of different opportunities. Like I never thought research would be an option at all. So when you're trying to, you know, coming, you're trying to approach your career or what, what you want to do in life, keeping an open minded and trying to, um, you know, understand what you actually want and having a timeline or like a layout, that's really important. That's like something that you should always strive to do. So currently I am uh, working at Trudeau Institute. I'm grateful for their acceptance. And this is what I will be working on in the sense like growing cell lines, propagating virus and bacteria. So this is immunology and infection, infectious disease institute. Mm -hmm. I haven't done anything related to that. Uh, and I'm just keeping my mind open and you know, um, trying to move from neuroscience to immunology and understanding the process. So this is also a learning curve for me. So you know, taking chances and trying something different, taking that leap and then, you know, like faith in yourself and your hard work that you've come so far and just putting your all in, in anything that you do is really important. Um, that's I would say. So a few takeaways that I listed down was like, it's okay to start slow, but you have to always ask what's next, right? You have to make sure that whatever you're doing has a payback and being luc lucrative meaning um, you are being, uh, you know, flexible and capitalizing on your options are really important. Like what is available to you? How can you get the best outcome? Or what are the alternative ways? So as, as I was graduating, I applied to 12 different PhD colleges. I got rejected from all of them um, because I'm, you know, doing a PhD right after graduation. Some students do, probably I'm not one of them yet because I yet to get um, experience and knowledge more. So I got accepted in few master's program, but I didn't have financial, I couldn't afford to go to a master's because that's a lot of money and I don't have any, and I don't, my family will be able to do that. So just, you know, keeping those options, you know, you apply for those things and not being afraid of the failures and growing out of all of those challenges that you face coming to us. It's not really easy, but just, you know, having that grit to, you know, do something different and trying to always pursue uh, what you really want, keeping an open, open mindedness would be something, you know, stepping out of the comfort zone would be something that's really important and investing on yourself, personal development, interpersonal skills. And, um, and not just limiting yourself to one thing, having a broader stroke, uh, like, and having, uh, you know, giving a, but that gives you like enough foundation to set your career path. Um, I think I hit most of the points. Yeah, so just willingness to do new things, uh, trying new things, and that would, would, I think it would be important for you to like, you know, continue growing as a person. All right, thank you. If you guys have any questions, we both are open to take. So I'm going to unmute all the participants. So uh, please make sure you, if and there's any question, uh, go one by one so that uh, uh, we get equal opportunity to all the people to ask relevant questions. Uh, I've unmuted all, uh, and uh, you can unmute from your side if you ask any questions. And uh, one more thing, please. Uh, uh, yeah, you can ask the question in any language, Ladakhi, Hindi, English, not necessarily it should be in English as well. They understand Ladakhi very well. Uh, one more thing, just want to add, like you can also uh, type your questions in the chat group, so we can, we'll just read it. Yep. Okay, I got a question. You got to check chat. Right. Yep. Okay. How much is the um, minute percentage scholarship? Would you like to take that? Sure. So. I don't think there's a minimum or a maximum like a limit, but uh, to get a full scholarship, it entirely, it's not just merit based. It also depends on your financial status. Like if you can pay or if you cannot pay. And 
and they will also take care <clears throat> they will take care very well of that one like uh, academic is important percentage is important but it's not it's uh, also your like other things are like financial if you can pay like uh, they'll ask for your financial statement your father's financial statement and if they think that you can pay they'll ask you to pay if they think that you can't pay they will also give you other scholarships as well yeah so i would like to ask uh, rigzin andrele is this like uh, for uwc or going to um, the college in us what which uh, which one do you entail it to be okay for uwc yeah so it's not so um there is no minimum percentage bar their website will not show like okay this student is amjik thobna manenga yong cha me jitte they don't say that right what they do is like they make sure if you are not if you know they look at the holistic advantages if you, who you are as a person like in the sense they will do the application process talk with you interview with you and see um how you are as a person how do you engage with people do you have the uwc core values what's your general outlook on the world and service are you going to pay back to the community so all those aspects are really important for you to get considered as uh, as a uwc student right and they don't really if you have those you know like uh, the ethos and you you hit all those points then they don't really uh focus much on your grades it's you don't have to be the a plus student to get into into uwc that's not their aim right they want to have uh people not just of like robot with great mind like you know like they, so they they want to have a holistic purpose so yeah i would i would say that so don't uh limit yourself in the sense thinking about the grades just applying yeah. for it yeah yeah i would say like just apply whatever you have grades it doesn't matter just apply mm -hmm. yep no problem any more questions mm -hmm. okay i would like to ask one question that sure. uh, any tips or advice that you would would like to uh, would like to give uh, for someone who is interview interviewing in the international opportunity mm -hmm. what tips and tricks that we should have to get selected in that particular opportunity okay okay i can go okay so i i still remember the interview that i have with uh, the committee uwc committee from uwc singapore so one of the basic thing is like just be authentic like just explain whoever you are like what's your values what do you think how do you tackle problems they'll also give you like some problem solutions so you look at like what's your uh take on that like how would you overcome this uh, situation so like the best thing is like just be authentic like you don't have to like uh, like you check the uwc values and even if you don't have like okay you will just make out like it doesn't work like whatever you think whatever your perspective is just be natural and be real and be yeah authentic i think like being authentic it's one of the main criteria right um as sonam said so the different parts of interview system right like so for uwc like what they see is like how you function in a group they will give you a prompt okay um uh, i remember from my interview they said um the um far flung jage get kya terua electricity mit kya like road mit kya kaji development coins they can that was the group prompt and we had to work together in a group they will look at you they will observe you how you're functioning with other group member how are what are the strategies are you bringing along are those sustainable how are they benefiting the people you know so you they they look at the, those aspects as well and a tip would be just yeah being authentic is really important and trying to think of creative ways to approach a problem trying to problem solve uh through not just from the typical mainstream idea but like what are the other things that you can do hala so that would be really important and looking at the population and the people and the prompts that you given thinking locally and thinking not from an international perspective like getting immersed into the people and the culture and 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 having that outlook so those are also important aspects uh uh that you need to consider when you're interviewing and if you would like to have like a one on one session of like 
um, uh, like if you're applying for a UWC or any other colleges, like ask us, we would definitely love to like talk with you and give you like share our advices about how to be, you know, being in that confident mindset. And yeah, so we, we can definitely do that happen. Yep, we're always there, any kind of social media, yeah, we've been working for a long, sort of a long time too, so that's great. Um, yeah, so there's another question, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, if someone wants to go abroad after 12 for studies, how can we apply? That's a great question, actually. You don't have to just go to UWC to apply to US colleges. US colleges are open for a lot of, like they have international students like reservation. They want international students because it's a liberal arts college. What they, what they focus on, um, is also they want to get international students, right? So what you have to do is basically you have to um, like first narrow the um, application, where, where, which colleges you want to go. You have to do your research. Um, there are a lot of colleges here in the US, which locations you want to go. Do you want to go to like the Northeast or the West Coast where you want to go? Hala. So narrowing them down and then doing a lot of research and going spending time on that website is the first way to start. Second, talking with the people who are staying there, like uh, making connection. There are a lot of students who are in US currently studying and making connections and asking them and asking about their perspective about studying in those colleges is important. I would, I would do that and having that personal connection, talking with them is it's helpful for you to understand how the process goes. Third, um, getting your SAT, SAT, um, standardized uh, test or ACT, which is another standardized uh, test, get those done. Um, those exams have centers in big cities in uh, India. They do make sure you finish those, um, get a good score and um, try to apply to colleges and the application process is not that hard. You need like three recommendations from people like your advisor, your teacher or anybody else, you know, that you had like a professional relationship with and um, who can vouch for you, who can say that, okay, you are, you are a good candidate and you can go and you can study there. So that's their recommenders. Um, and uh, the SAT examination that's uh, there and 12th standard day, um, what is it called? Uh, your results are important. And uh, your application, they will give three, two to three questions that you have to answer. Like, why, do, why are you interested in our college? Uh, what are your experiences that you would like to bring to our college? So there are questions that are listed and they, if you spend time on the website, they will give you the application deadlines and how you should approach them. So that's the basic um, uh, framework, I would say. Okay, uh, so there's another question from Dorje. Do you both uh, know about some scholarship options for masters? Um, yeah, I think I can take that. Okay. Um, Right, so that was one of my uh, problem that I also came across, like, why did I apply to PhD, not applying before to masters? Because I knew that financial problems will happen. And if you, the thing is like, if you apply for a PhD and I intend to do a PhD, so I thought like, just apply or whatever, like if I don't get it, not, not a big deal. So I applied to the PhD because they have stipends. They, they give you back. You don't have to pay for tuitions. They will treat you as an employee. So that was my main outlook on why, why I want to go for PhD. It's hard, but I thought I'll give it a try. But for master's program, they have scholarships. Um, um, they won't have a lot of, so it depends upon the college. The bigger the college it is, the more funding they will have and the more they can give to students, international students. So you will uh, have to uh, go through the, you know, the guidelines again, the checklist again, and there are uh, scholarship opportunities, but they won't really give like full percentage. But it also depends on, because I know Stanzin Angmo, she applied to do two different colleges. Um, she, she applied to Drexel and uh, John Hopkins. She got accepted into both, which is great. And for Drexel, she got a full scholarship. Because, uh, because she has been working, you know, the summertime, she has been contributing with uh, New Ladakhi Girl Movement. She has been proactively empowering women. So th they see those kind of aspects. And even if you are not able to fund, fund your master's, they will see those aspects and they will make sure that you will have fellowship or other ty type of funding sources. Um, those are possible. And 
yes, like uh, you will have funding mechanism depends on the schools. Um, but in my case, I wasn't given a full scholarship for the masters. So that's why I was not able to uh, get into it. So what I'm trying to do in the meantime is do a job, try to save up. And, um, and then from this experience that I will have, I will apply again and probably get accepted or we'll see how it goes. Yeah. I think I'll add one more point. So like most of the time, like I know, like I'm, I also come from like a Ladakhi background. We all more like always like talk about the financial situation. Like, okay, so how are you paying? So those are like financing is important, but like first, like know your goal, whatever, like if you want to study abroad, if you want to do some program, like do some more research. And when you do some research and if you want to go to a certain colleges and do more research and when you do research, you know about more things and you, if you have a will, there's always a way. So don't worry much, just do a bit research, talk to people, talk to us, talk to Lamstan. It's a wonderful platform. So you will find a way. And it's also about the learning experience, right? You are yeah. not afraid of failure anymore. I'm not afraid to be rejected anymore. Like I got 12 rejections. I've done, you know what I mean? So you learn from those things. And when you go for the next time, you're even more stronger, even more prepared. And you know what to do, what, what you know, pathways you have to follow. So that's something that you are taking the challenge. So having that outlook is also important. Yeah. Okay, so to yeah. Next question. There's another question from Bijendra. What about part-time job opportunities to maintain expenses during study tenure and how do we get hostel facilities? Mm -hmm. Okay, I can go. So studying in the US, one of the best thing is like on campus, you can do like part-time jobs and, and most of the jobs are like on campus. So you like, the best thing is like doing job and also studying is like, you have to maintain your time, like timetable. You have to have certain times, like it's a good uh, opportunity to work and study so that you can also work on your like time management. So uh, like as an international student, like for me, like you have like per week, like 20 hours, like maximum limit to work on campus. So that's, <clears throat> that was like very good. And like, it can finance you for your like other expenses. And I think in most of the US colleges, if you go to US colleges, they will also have like, it's a based on like campus, they have like hostel facilities as well. So if you don't want to stay in hostels, you can also stay outside. But for me, like as an international student, I have to stay on campus and it's also comes under the scholarship. And most of the time, like hostel facilities, they usually covers in the scholarship. Yeah, part-time job is like, it's an amazing experience. You also have the experience to work and on and to be independent. Like after coming to US, you like, I think I can say like, I'm completely independent. Like you can no longer bother your parents. And like, I think uh, somehow they will be proud of you that you're good. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And any more questions? Feel free to ask us anything. Yeah, I would just like to add that this is possible for anyone. This is not just possible if you're going to UW. So you can take different, you know, keeping the international opportunities or that, that in back of your mind and just applying and doing your own research and asking people and just keeping an open mind, right? Like it's possible for anyone. I would, I would like to emphasize that. And um, anybody can come to US um, from, from India, from Ladakh and, you know, and take a different pathway. Yeah. And it's and not just US, like you can apply to like Europe and anywhere. Like I know like some uh, students, like some you know, friends from Ladakh who like studies in Europe or like other parts. So like, if you want to, like, if you have the will, if you have the courage, if you want to really do it, like if you really want to do it, like you will find a way. And they, and right now, like this, like internet uh, connectivity everywhere and information is on your fingertips. So you will find a way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, I think that was a very yeah. interactive session. So that's all. Hope oh, you that's all get to know. Okay, that's there's more. another question. Okay, um, what about doctoring in abroad? Oh, who can we apply after? Mm -hmm. Where can we apply after? Well, uh, how maybe? Yes. Yeah, so um, you can apply to be so okay. Um, 
the doctoring, the pre-med, they say pre-med. So after 12th, you can go to colleges that they have medical colleges in the US because the one that I went to is a liberal arts college. So there are two different professional colleges, uh, medical colleges, and then liberal, liberal arts colleges. So you can take a pre-med track and take all the biology related classes, all the, um, you know, like classes that are meant for you to do a doctoring that you can do. And after that, you can give MCAT. And after your college, you can prepare for your MCAT, MCAT and, um, and finish that MCAT. And then I'm not sure about what's the next step for it, but you have to give the examination, right? I initially had a, oh, I'll do a MCAT train, as a pre-med train. Uh, I'll do this, I'll do that. Mm-hmm. I had this whole like very, you know, when I first came to US. But things were different because international students, they, I, I got this outlook of like, okay, international students, if you have hard touches or not, because they don't get accepted into medical college easily because they give preference to, um, to US students who has like, you know, US residency, which I didn't have. So I thought probably that's not really a good time to invest in it. So let's do something different. Um, so that's why. And after 12th abroad, how can I apply? Um, you, I, yes, like after 12th, uh, I'm not really sure about it. Um, I will have to get back on it, but you can go to different, um, um, uh, like, so there, I would say that you will have the opportunity to apply to different colleges, medical colleges, but it's going to be hard for you because you're international. So doing, I would say, if you want to really do a doctor, then going back to India and doing it in India is the best option for you. Um, but just keeping your mind open because there are clinical trials, uh, being a researcher or like if you're passionate about science and if you don't want to be a doctor, then there are other avenues that you can also take into consideration by coming um, to abroad. And if you want to become a doctor, you can take those experiences and go back to India and start it from there. That's also there because your educate your education here of your studying sciences and all those classes are also taken into consideration. It's not that oh, if you go abroad, you won't be able to come back and the Indian system is going to be different. It's going to be different, but you're ready for those challenges. You can tackle them. Yeah. Thank you for the questions and yep, no problem. Okay, I think it was. So uh, that's all from our side. Hope you all gained some knowledge and we would like to thank you. Thanks our mentor for taking their precious time and helping us to know more about international opportunities. Thank you, Asile. Thank you, Asile. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you, Lamspan. Yeah, thank you. It's always happy to help. Thank you so much. Uh, and yeah, thank, thanks for taking out your time. I know there's a uh, nine and a half hours of time difference, but still uh, we managed to get it done. So uh, that's, uh, that's a good job. Uh, thanks for the uh, yeah, uh, guidance. Uh, and uh, if there's any other issues or any queries that uh, any of the students are asking, uh, we will not hesitate to connect with you both. Uh, so we will add you to the relevant uh, WhatsApp group for international students. Uh, and uh, on that, if any questions pop up, uh, please uh, feel free to answer them. And at the same time, I would request you both to uh, add more and more international students on those WhatsApp, WhatsApp platforms. And also, I'll just put my email ID. If people would like to contact and if I have further questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, and, you know, you can directly, like, send an email here. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, everyone. For Thank have you. a good night, everyone.